Hey guys, this is Magna, and welcome back to another modding tutorial for Total War. Now this is a very important tutorial for uh, maintaining one of the most important uh, community modding tools. And there's too few people who actually uh, know how to do this, uh, and it's essential for pretty much for keeping PFM, Pack File Manager, uh, usable, both for the current release games as they get patched, and also for any new games in the future. So, the way that Pack File Manager works is it will grab uh, a table from the game, uh, and that table is essentially just a whole bunch of bytes, a bunch of data. Uh, and what makes the uh, pack file manager able to read it is a it's what's called a schema it's an xml document which you can find in your pfm uh, folder it's called master schema so you can open that with notepad and what it is it's an xml document for this is an example table you have the table name uh, the table version number and then you'll have a bunch of fields here uh, which essentially determine what type of data is used by in that table so that it can then read it. Uh, the version number is linked then to uh, here, these different ones for each game, so Total War Warhammer, max version, so you, open, you can open that again with, uh, and you see what is the maximum version number that this PFM will use to check the definition of that table. And we'll come back to the schemas later. Let's let's focus on actually how we, how we decode a table which has through a patch or whether it's a new game uh, which doesn't work, which we can't read. So one from the most recent patches is a mercenary unit groups table. It's here. So you're going to click on data core, and you see, yep, you get a little pop up there. It says essentially says. PFM can't decode this table because the scheme is wrong. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click on that table and we're going to go open open a decode tool and we get this little screen here. On the left here we have all the bytes of that whole table. Uh, showing, and what we're going to do is we're going to go bit by bit through that until we kind of figure out what it is and then we're going to check it all. Uh, over here we have the current definition from the previous update. This worked before the before the most recent update. It was looking exactly like this, but now when we use that same definition, we get here some data values which don't really look correct. So something's happened, and we're going to go through it and we're going to uh, fix it up. So these three here, we've got here. We've got a float. All right, this float is a, a float is a decimal number. It uh, can also be, you know, one, two, three, it can be a non decimal number as well. Uh, then we have a string, string ASCII. So a string, yeah, that looks like a string here. This is called an int, an integer, so it's a whole number. And zero, that's also a whole number, so that looks right. But when we get here to a really la a large number here, an integer, I've never seen a number this big used as an integer in the game, so I'm going to assume that that's incorrect. And string here just flat out tells you, no, no, I'm right. So I've assumed three of these are correct, so I'm not going to change them. I'm just going to delete the ones which uh, I think are wrong, which are the last two. To do that, we come down to this area here, uh, and we will click the delete button twice. It'll delete whatever's at the bottom first. All right, then we have this little area here, which is going to help us to decode the new definition of the table. Uh, we have all the different integer types, let's try the different data types that we could possibly have string which is something like this for instance that's a string an integer is a whole number that's probably too big a bool it means true or false invalid is definitely not a, a bool a float is a decimal number now this is a decimal number but it's got an e in there as well so that's probably not a float op string i think is an optional string so it can be blank or it can have value in there so it's worth checking it out and we've got a byte i've never actually used a byte value uh, in decoding a table. It may be useful in some circumstances, but I've just not found it. 
Uh, and then at the bottom here you have header length, which determines how much uh, data bef is in that table before it actually starts to give you the data that we're going to be going through. Uh, so what this is, this defines all the columns that are in a single row. So we've got chance to replenish, key, max count, and then we've got something else. So, so we're going to look through all these different data strings and here at these, these data types and we're going to see what is uh, a likely value for that would go. So we can look here at op string, you can see it's not, it says invalid. Float, I've already said it's not a float, it's got an E number there, it's very unlikely. Bool, it's definitely not a bool because it says invalid as well. And we deleted the int, the integer, because that's just a huge number to doubt that it's going to be that. But here at string, we have a value which looks like it belongs. So if it looks like it belongs, we're going to try it out. So we click use, and it'll... Oop, I clicked the wrong button. Okay, let's click that and do it again. Uh, I'm going to... Oh. Okay, I got that integer back. I'm going to go with use, and there we go. Now we've got it there. And then we're going to try out for the next one. Um, there may or may not be another value coming up. I mean, I know that there is, but you can test it by going through each row. So these arrows here will take you through row by row. So we go to the next row, we'll see that there'll be errors there. So we know that there's something else left to this table. So again, we're going to... I've already said that. Oh, what have I done? <laughs> Play that. Okay. Good. Uh, so now I'm going to add another value to this table. Uh, and we're going to go through the options again for the next column. So it, string, it's blank. I doubt it's going to be that then. Uh, integer, it could be, but I doubt it. Uh, integer, it's a huge number. Forget it. Op string, it could be an op string. It could be a float, and it could be a ball, a boolean. So we can try them. Just pick a random one. Let's pick a false. Okay, and then we can test if that's going to work. And again, we've got errors here, so that's not correct. Or it could be correct, and there could be another value. Uh, so that we can assume that it's correct, and we can go down here. Okay, what's another value? You can try an op string next. And we go through again, and we get a problem. And so we delete that last one we did, and we can try it with another ball, another ball in. No, we've got another problem. And the last option, we can try it with uh, float, which is one. Now that looks like the obvious one. I just wanted to show you doing it incorrectly a couple of times. But if there's a one there, then yeah, that can often be correct. So let's put that in and jump through. And there we go. That all looks correct as well. Uh, we're going to keep going through each row. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Rather than clicking right all the time, we can also click the problem button. And what this will do is it will take us right to, here you can see, it'll take us to one or two places. Either it will take us to the end of the table, the last row, at which point it will say unable to read beyond the end of the string. And if you get to there and there's no errors here, then you've got the right definition for the table, most likely. Uh, otherwise, it will take you to when there's the first issue with the table where there's a problem. Click this button to go right back to the beginning. So now we've actually got the correct definition for the table. Uh, and we, we want to do is we want to firstly go to show. Now in here we can rename all the different values for the table. Uh, I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the whole table. Because I don't want to lose that work when I click the next button. All right. So now if I want to open that table and test that my new definition is correct, I click the set button here. Uh, and now I can click back on that table, and there it is. It opens correctly now, which means I've decoded it correctly. Uh, this new definition which I just set will only work for this opening of uh, this pack. If I close it and open again, it'll say it's, it needs to be decoded again. So we want to share... Well, firstly, we want to uh, put it into our master schema, which is in your PFM folder, wherever you installed it. I'm going to open that with Notepad. We've got here. Let's uh, search for the table we're doing, which is mercenary something. Mercenary pool. Mercenary. Here it is. Mercenary unit groups table. So here we have it. 
This is table version zero. We don't want to overwrite that. What we want to do is we want to put in table version two. I right, type u, u version one. All right, so there's our mercenary unit groups table version one, copied and pasted from where it said show. And right, now we can save that in the master schema. And what we next have to do is we have to uh, make the max version for that table, not zero anymore, but one, so that it actually checks both the version zero and the version one to see if either one of them is going to work on that table. So we're going to open that with Notepad as well. Uh, we do that search for mercenary again. There it is. And we'll change this here to one. Uh, close it. And we can open it up again and check if that worked. Mercenary unit groups table. Bang. Now it works. What's even more important than doing this is to jump over to the Total War Center thread for PFM, which is currently for Warhammer. You always do it for the most recent game because that's the one that's um, uh, checked the most often. Uh, and you go in here and you will post. All right, let's put it in here, paste that in. Actually, I should probably put it in code if I can. I oh, forget it, let's put it in like that. All right, I'll post this later because we're going to do another table now. So that was one table, now let's pick another table. So some black tables can be uh, unreadable and need to be decoded. Blue ones are empty, that makes them much harder to decode, but it's still possible to decode them, uh, especially if you use assembly kit to populate them and then decode them. And then we also have uh, Red tables. Red tables are definitely not able to be read. Oh, that one can be read. That's weird. That one's empty. What's happening here? Okay, so here, there's this. Can't read it. So let's decode this one quickly. Uh, what have we got here? So it's, this is a blank. This has not been decoded in a previous version. So this is complete. We're starting from scratch. So it's going to say false, Noska. That's a good one. Wizard, good. Let's see if that's good. No, that's not it. There's something else. Uh, false. And that looks good. Yeah, let's do that. Let's check that. No, still not working. Um, another false? No. Uh, upstream, maybe. Hmm. Okay, so here, it's only that last one here which is invalid, so it tells me something's going on. What am I going to do? Maybe this is an off string, maybe this is a... No, it's actually a string. Maybe I can do true and then use string. Okay, let's try that. No. <laughs> uh, because this looks like something... Now this is the optional, it's just the, 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 the image file. So let's use that, that. Do that again for Norska. Okay, so now it's saying champion, that was a wizard. This is starting to look like it's coming back to the start, so I don't really want to keep going there. Uh, so something after here is happening. So the next version, that value will have to be a false. So that's what I'm trying to get to. So true, let's use that, and then an off stream. No. I wonder if here I have to use a byte. Never used it before. No, so here, here it would have to start again, but it's not working. All right, so maybe the problem here is that this second, this first boolean, maybe it's not two booleans. Uh, in a row, but rather at the up string here, true. See that goes. Bang! There we go. Done it. So it's just trial and error. All right. So let's go show. We can copy that, uh, and then we'll go set, and let's see if the table opens now.
table opens. There we go. So a lot of it's just, just mostly it's just trial and error and seeing what works. So I'm going to now also take that and I'm actually going to post it as well with the one I just decoded before. Because uh, this is the most important thing because this way you're sharing what you've found uh, with the rest of the modern community and the PFM can be updated from it. Alright, so I'm going to post that. And we're all done. That is how to decode schema tables, uh, PFM tables when they don't open. Uh, so thanks for watching and uh, hopefully you guys will all be contributing new, new uh, table definitions uh, in the future.